people say notorious, people say mean, it, it all come down to evil. I wasn't around when I dealt with Billy Bud. I was his possession. Everything in the ground is cursed and covered in blood. To have three people killed on a, on a snowy night, of all things, it was unheard of. There have been whispers, small town rumors, and campfire ghost stories about what happened on February 3rd, 1972, in Boone, North Carolina. But the truth is more twisted than anyone could have anticipated. It took a direction that I never even imagined. For most of his career, Watauga County Sheriff Len Hageman has been investigating what happened that night. It was a Thursday. A snowstorm had hit. The roads were slick and treacherous when police got a phone call. Bryce Durham, his wife Virginia, and their son Bobby were found tortured, strangled, and murdered in their home. Inside, everything had been turned upside down. From day one, it was it was like, you know, nobody would would say anything. That answer nobody ever knew. Would be found 50 years later, 250 miles away. The blood runs deep. Shane Burt knows every turn here. So that'll be another spot. So. But the winding roads of Barrow County, Georgia, and the banks of the Mulberry River. Daddy always buried people on the banks. Are also triggers for memories and sins that aren't his own. His hands were, was huge. You know, after I got on up in years, I got to look at those hands and thinking, you know, are these the hands that did all that? The meanest man I've ever met in my life. Bob Ingram spent the last 50 years working in law enforcement. He's also the man who helped put Shane's dad on death row. Bob is actually somebody that has helped me more in the last two years because the stories that I tell, the normal mind can't comprehend. His dad is Billy Sunday Burt, a poor boy from rural Georgia who worked in the sawmill and was known for being both intimidating and charming. Even with a speech impediment that made him hard to understand. Billy Burt was, was mean, he was evil. What keeps me up at night is um, a headless man. Billy, his dad, was the head of the Dixie Mafia. Yep. It was a group of small town men whose job was to run drugs, bootleg, rob, steal, and kill. Total, complete control of this area and the people in it from one war of fear. From 1970 to 74, Billy's killing spree ramped up. And Bob estimates that's when he murdered most of his 52 to 56 victims. But there are likely more. Daddy never sat down and told us a full story on anything. But you know, job was a job. Shane was just a baby when Billy went to prison for the last time. But over decades, he told Shane snippets of his crimes. Three miles, we hit a, hit a cluster. Now, the roads that lead to home also take him to dark places in his mind. One spot that we passed, it had seven homicides in it, or seven murders. But in his life, He's found someone stronger than the memories that haunt him. The disgrace was my dad, but the grace, she's an angel, she's a saint. Hi, my name is Ruby, and I'm the widow of Billy Sunday Burt. I was just like, just a child, and I worshiped the ground he walked on. Ruby was 12 when 17-year-old Billy married her. Mm -hmm. She became a prized possession he obsessively hid from the rest of the world. I remember I'd, I always wanted a garden. So he said, okay, I'm pretty well, I'm gonna fix you a garden. But if I come home and catch you out there in that garden, 
is I'm going to plow it up. He just bust out laughing and plowed up my garden. They had five kids together. Shane and me. Her whole world was her kids and her husband, who often disappeared for days at a time. I went down and I said, uh, why don't you stay with me and the kids tonight? He said, pretty well, but I can't. You know, I got things to do. And I said, uh, well, one day you go want me, and I won't want you. He looked at me and said, pretty woman, you'll die then too. Billy's disregard for law and life finally caught up to him. Ruby was 30 when he was found guilty of torturing and murdering an elderly couple in Rennes, Georgia. He was sentenced to death, but was later given life in prison instead. Through the trial, uh, they were showing pictures, you know, of the Rennes couple. And I could shut my eyes down and see them. I wish I'd never seen them. It didn't stop till, till God was through with it. When Billy went to prison, Ruby was thrown into a world she didn't know with five kids uh, and $30. I, I just prayed, and that's still my prayer. Lord, don't let them jeans get in my sons. She has hundreds of photos at home. I said my pictures are my, my memories. Album after album, proof that she did it. She went back and got her GED, raised chickens, baked cakes, drove a school bus, and mostly prayed. I know there's women was in my shoes. And to show them that you can get out of it, the Lord will get you out. Billy died in prison in 2017. She's kept her story close until she sat down with journalist and author, Phil Hudgens. My thoughts were that, how did this family live through that? How did Ruby and Elbert live through all of this? When writing their book. Tell me what brought this on. Well, I, I didn't, I always thought we was different but normal. Shane remembered a story his dad told him about a hit in North Carolina. Shane finally remembered that he said the word Boone. There's a lot like Boone that, that just dropped out of the sky. It's like we, we had no idea who the people were. Dixie Mafia, what are you talking about? Bob, Cole called Carolyn Johnson. It was May of 2019. Carolyn's the captain of the investigations unit at the Watauga County Sheriff's Office. Bob had information on a 50-year cold case. Some serial killers do things for fame or they want attention. These guys, I, I think it was a way of living. Their story was almost unbelievable about how Billy and others had been hired to rob and kill a family up in the mountains of North Carolina. But there was only one man still alive who could confirm it all. No remorse, no emotion whatsoever. Billy Wayne Davis was in a Georgia prison serving life for murder. While Billy Sunday Burt did most of the killing for the Dixie Mafia, Davis pulled the strings. Knew exactly what was going on, but yet you could look into his eyes and you could still see the evil. You could still see it. That doesn't go away. And, and what were you arrested for, do you remember? <laughs> After hours of interviews, Davis confessed, naming others who were there as well. When the truth came out, Shane felt relieved. You cannot tell people how sorry, because their pain is more than you're sorry. As for Ruby, the pain almost consumed her. That took some praying, and for years I thought, Lord, take it from me. I can't, it, it was eating me alive. But faith intervened even in Billy's life. In 1992, almost 20 years after he'd been convicted of murder, he was baptized. Whenever we went and seen my dad, especially like the last three times, the first thing he wanted to do was join hands and pray. I guess my own peace of mind, I believe it because I want to, you know. I can't, I can't judge anybody. Holy and acceptable. Amen. Peace. It was still elusive all those years. Like I can say for the first time in 50 years, I feel free. Free, thanks to faith.